Hey, are y'all ready to learn the outside pre-trip inspection in under 25 minutes? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's go. <laughs> All right, today we're going to be conducting a pre-trip inspection on a Class A tractor trailer. The pre-trip inspection and the post-trip inspection are required by both federal and state laws. Um, the pre-trip inspection consists of three parts for the state examination. You've got the Class A section, which is the engine compartment, B, which is the door mirror area back, C is the trailer area. When you're doing the exam with the examiner, you're typically only going to do the driver's side of the tractor and the trailer and then anything on the opposite side that is unique and different from the driver's side. You would check those parts that are unique on the other side. What we'll do is we'll do a general overview on each section prior to actually getting into inspecting the parts. So we'll start at the front of the tractor we're going to look under, we're going to do a general overview looking underneath, making sure there's no leaks underneath the tractor. No oil leaks, no radiator leaks, no fluid leaks at all. We're going to also look at the tractor to make sure it's not tilted, leaning one side or the other. Any tilting might indicate that you've got a suspension problem, a tire problem, a load problem. Okay, we're going to look at the lights. The lights get checked twice during the test. They get checked from the outside to make sure they're not cracked, they're clean, and then they also get checked when you do the cab check, the cab part of the inspection, to make sure that they're operational. So from the outside, we're going to check the lights, making sure they're clean, not cracked or damaged, and that they're the proper color, clear on the headlights, yellow on the turn signals. <clears throat> you also have lights down here that are clean, not cracked or damaged, and they're clear color. We're going to go up to the top. All right, we're looking at the clearance lights up top, they're properly mounted, they're clean, not cracked or damaged, and they're yellow. All right, we're going to look at the uh, mirrors on the front hood here. They're properly mounted and secured, they're not loose or damaged. The glass is clean and not cracked. Now we're going to go into the engine compartment area. We want to make sure that the Hood is unlatched on both sides. We put our foot in here, grab the hood, and pull it forward. And go. On this side of the tractor, there's only a few things that need to be checked. So we'll start here, then we'll move to the other side. So we do a general overview of it first. All right, we're looking at all our hoses. No bumps, abrasions, no cuts in any of the hoses. And they're all secured properly at, their, at the ends. Okay, we're looking at the radiator making sure it's properly mounted, not cracked or damaged, doesn't appear to be leaking. We're going to look at our exhaust system within the engine compartment. It's properly mounted and secured, nothing appears to be cracked or damaged. Everything's clamped in place. And then you want to look for exhaust leaks. Around the clamps there would be black soot if you had an exhaust leak. All right. We're going to move down here to the alternator. Alternator's properly mounted and secured, it's not crack damage, it's not loose in any way, you're going to look at your wires. Your wires are connected properly, they're not frayed or torn. Your alternator's bolted into place. The alternator, you have to check the belt on it. Okay, the belt's not cracked, frayed, or torn, and it has no more than three quarters of an inch play or deflection in it. You have to say that the alternator is belt driven. From this side of the engine compartment now, we'll move on to the other side. Okay, on this side of the engine compartment, once again, we're going to do a general overview. Looking at all our hoses, no bumps, abrasions, cuts in them. They don't appear to be leaking. They all appear to be clamped into place. Okay, over here we have our water pump. Water pump's properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, damaged, it's not loose, it's not leaking. You can follow the hose from the water pump 
to the radiator to find your water pump. Water pump is belt driven, no more than three quarters of an inch play. It's not crack, freight, or damaged. <clears throat> the remainder of the engine compartment, I like to kind of be systematic about it. Start from the back, kind of move forward, start from the furthest end point, and come out. So, up top here, we have our air compressor. All right, it's properly mounted and secured, all the lines are connected. So nothing's cracked or damaged, loose. We don't hear any air leaks on it. Below the air compressor is your power steering pump. It's properly mounted and secured. The lines are connected, the hoses that run from that to the power steering gearbox and a the reservoir. They're all connected, they're not leaking, they're clamped properly. Now both the air compressor and the power steering, you have to identify whether they're belt or gear driven. On this particular tractor, they're both gear driven, okay? As we continue forward, we're looking at our power steering reservoir. It's properly mounted and secured, not cracked, damaged, or loose. The cap is on it, and it's not leaking. The hose running from the power steering reservoir to the gearbox has to be identified separately from all the other hoses. So once again, look at that one. It's connected at both ends. There's no bumps, abrasions, and it's not leaking. <clears throat> Below the Reservoir, we have the power steering gearbox. It's properly mounted and secured, not cracked, damaged, loose. All your bolts are in place, they're not loose, and it's not leaking. You have your three parts to the steering linkage here. You don't have to identify them by name. You can just say the three part steering linkage. One, two, three. Properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or damaged. There's no loose parts. You have castle nuts on both of them with cotter pins in place. They're tight and the cotter pins are there. Now we'll move, we'll move to the rest of the suspension. We have our shock absorber. Shock mounts at the top and the bottom are properly, uh, properly secured and tight. Bolts aren't loose. Shock absorber itself is not cracked, bent, or damaged, and there's no hydraulic fluid leaking from it. The suspension, the remainder of the suspension is your leaf springs. Leaf springs aren't shifted. They're not cracked, broken, damaged and they're all stacked on top of each other. There's no missing leaf springs. You have your U-bolts in the middle and your spring hangers or spring mounts on the ends. They're properly mounted. They're not cracked or damaged. All your bolts are tight on the U-bolts and the spring hangers. We're gonna check our coolant reservoir. It's properly mounted and secured. It's not loose. The bolts are all tight. It's not leaking. It's at the safe range and you make sure that your cap is on. We have our oil level here. This is checked with the engine off. You would pull the dipstick out wipe it off, put it back in, pull it out, make sure that the oil is in the safe range and not the add range. Let's go ahead and move down to our brake system now. You have four parts to the brakes. First is your brake hoses or brake lines. No bumps, abrasions, cuts in them. You don't hear any air leaks and they're properly mounted and secured at both ends. The small line here is your ABS wire. It's attached to your brake line. It's not frayed, torn, or damaged, and it's connected at both ends. We move to the brake chamber itself, properly mounted and secured, not cracked or damaged, don't hear any air leaks, and the clamp on the brake chamber is tight and secure. From the brake chamber, we move to the slack adjuster push rod. Okay, you have your push rod and your slack adjuster. Should be no more than a 90 degree angle. Cotter pin is in place, no crack, broken, damaged parts. When the brakes are disengaged, the slack adjuster should not pull out more than an inch. From the slack adjuster push rod, we move to the brake drums and linings. Your brake linings on the inside need to be at least a quarter of an inch thickness. They can't be cracked, damaged, or loose. They're properly mounted. No oil, grease, or contaminants on them. We look at our brake drums. No illegal welds. They're properly mounted. They're not cracked or damaged. From there, we're going to move to our tire and rim. The rim itself, no illegal welds, cracks, or damage to the rim, and the tire is seated properly on the rim. The inside wall of the tire, no cuts, bubbles, or gouges, abrasions on it. We move to the actual tread itself. Tread needs to be a minimum of four thirty seconds of an inch, no cuts, bubbles, punctures, nails, screws in the tire. The steering tires have to be virgin radials and the two front steering tires have to match. They cannot be retreads. From the tread, we move to the sidewall. No cuts, bubbles, abrasions anywhere on the sidewall. 
The tire is seated properly on the rim. Rim itself, no Ill illegal welds, cracks, or damage on the rim. You look at your valve stems, not cracked or damaged, it's not leaking, and it has a steel cap on it. Lug nuts, no missing lug nuts, no loose lug nuts. No rust trails or shiny metal shavings around the lug nuts that would indicate that a lug nut is loose. Checking our axle seal. This one, we would make sure that the fluid level is in a safe range. It's not leaking, and all the bolts around the axle hub are also secure and not loose. Last thing we're checking on the tire, besides the tread depth or the tread depth and the condition, is the tire pressure. You would ch check the tire pressure by placing a tire pressure gauge on the valve stem, and you want to make sure that it has at least 100 psi or manufacturer specifications. Okay, the next part of the truck is the door area on back to the rear axles. We're going to do a general overview. Doesn't appear to be anything damaged, no intrusions, anything like that on the cab. We're going to check our side, light, side marker lights here. They're clean, not cracked or damaged, another proper color yellow. Checking our mirror, making sure it's bolted properly and secured to the door. Glass isn't cracked or damaged, then it's clean. We're going to check our door. We want to make sure that the door handle opens and closes, making sure the window goes up and down, checking our rubber weather stripping around the door, making sure it's not frayed, torn, or rip, ripped. We're checking our hinges. They're not cracked, broken, or damaged. You can lift up on the bottom of the door, make sure they're in good condition. We close the door, checking our steps. Steps are properly mounted. They're not cracked or damaged. There's no oil, grease, or contaminants on them, and they'll hold your weight. We're looking at our batteries, making sure all our cables are connected to the posts, no corrosion on them, nothing appears to be damaged there. Move to the diesel exhaust fluid tank. Properly mounted and secured, doesn't appear to be leaking. All the bolts are in place. You would check the cap, it has to have a rubber seal on it with the safety strap on it. Make sure that it's secured. From there we move to the fuel tank. Fuel tank's properly mounted and secured. The straps are on, securing it, holding into place. There's no leaks on it, no holes in it. And you would check the cap on this, also making sure that it has the rubber seal and the safety chain on it. From here, we're going to move to the catwalk. The catwalk is properly mounted and secured. Nothing's cracked, damaged, or loose. We're looking at the frame and the cross members. No cracks, damage. No aftermarket welds or aftermarket holes drilled into the frame. All right. You're going to follow your exhaust system down below the tractor. It's properly mounted and secured. Nothing appears to be loose or cracked. And you want to look for indications of leaks would be black soot anywhere where there's clamps. All right. Properly mounted and secured, not cracked or damaged, no black soot. We'll come back around the other side and finish up. All right, over here we've got the drive shaft and the U-joint. Drive shaft's not cracked, bent, or damaged. It's not loose or hanging. And the U-joint doesn't appear to be any debris in there that could cause a problem when the tractor starts rolling. All right, we're going to check the mud flap splash guards, making sure they're properly mounted and secured. They're not cracked, damaged, or torn. From here, we're going to move to our brake parts, the four components of the brakes. You've got your brake chamber with the clamp, it's properly mounted and secured, not cracked, damaged, or loose, and you don't hear any air leaks on it. Your slack adjuster push rods back behind it. Push rod, slack adjuster, no crack, broken, damaged parts. When the brakes are disengaged, the slack uh, push rod should not pull out more than one inch. You have your ABS line connected here. It's not frayed, torn, connected properly at both ends, and your brake hoses running from the brake chamber. They're not cracked, torn, they're not leaking, no bumps or abrasions on them. We go to the back of the tire where you have your brake drums and linings. Okay, your brake linings are at least a quarter of an inch thick. They're not cracked or damaged or properly mounted, and there's no oil, grease, or contaminants on them. Your brake drums, no illegal welds, they're properly mounted, no cracks or damage on them. Go to the suspension parts. Our leaf springs, no missing leaf springs, they're not cracked or damaged, and they're properly mounted at both ends with your spring hangers or spring mounts. 
bolted and secured into place and your U-bolts in the middle, properly mounted and secured, no loose bolts. Your shock absorber, properly bolted at the top and the bottom, the shock mounts and the shock absorber itself, not bent, cracked or damaged and there's no hydraulic fluid leaking. Last part to the suspension parts is your airbag. It's mounted properly on the top and the bottom. It's not cracked, damaged, or loose air mounts. The airbag itself is not cracked, frayed, no cuts, bumps, abrasions in it, and you don't hear any air leaks. This splash guard is also properly mounted to the frame. It's not dragging, it's not loose, it's not hanging too low. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and move to the tires. You got two tires here. You're going to check the sidewalls on both tires, inner and outer. No cuts, bubbles, or abrasions on the sidewalls. The tire, the steering, or the uh, tread tire on the drive tires, the tread depth needs to be a minimum of 230 seconds. So that'd be the drive tires on the tractor and the trailer. No cuts, bubbles, gouges in the tread. No uh, screws or nails in it. Checking both sides. You also want to check the rim on both sides of both tires. No illegal welds, cracks, or damage to the rim. And we're going to check the bud spacing, making sure the tires are budded evenly on here. There's a proper space in between and that there's no debris in there when you start rolling could puncture the tires. We move to the outside sidewall. No cuts, bubbles, abrasions on it. Tires are seated properly on the rims. Both tires, rim, no illegal welds, cracks, or damage to the rim. Lug nuts, no loose lug nuts, no missing lug nuts, no rust trails or shiny metal shavings that would indicate that a lug nut is loose. Your axle seal is not leaking, and all your bolts are secured and in place on this, no rust trails or shiny metal shavings. You're going to look at your valve stem. It's not cracked or damaged, both valve stems on both tires. You would check the tire pressure by putting a tire pressure gauge on the valve stem and the tire needs to be inflated to at least 100 psi or manufacturer specifications and the valve stem has a steel cap on it. We're going to look at our coupling system here. Right now the tractor is disconnected but the coupling system has to be checked on both the tractor and the trailer side. You're going to look at your lines making sure they're not frayed or torn. The electrical line, no exposed wire. If these were connected to the trailer, they need to be up off of the up off the catwalk. On the tractor side, we're making sure that they're properly connected. You don't hear any leaks. We're checking the electrical line. You pull this out, look at the prongs, make sure the prongs aren't cracked, there's no or broken, there's no debris in there, and the safety latch is holding the electrical plug into place. We're going to look at our glad hands that go to the trailer side. The rubber grommet is in good condition. If it was attached on the glad hands on the trailer, there would be a good connection there, a good seal. You wouldn't hear any air leaks. And once again, you're checking the electrical line on the trailer the same way that you checked this one here. Safety latch safe, is working properly. There's no debris in there and the prongs aren't broken or damaged. All right, now we're going to check the rest of the coupling system. All right, this is our fifth wheel assembly. This is our skid plate. Okay, we want to make sure that the skid plate's properly mounted, it's not cracked or damaged, and that it's greased. This is your release arm safety latch. If your trailer is hooked up with the kingpin underneath the skid plate, your release arm is going to be engaged, locked in position. With the, with the uh, safety jaws, safety uh, locking jaws open, the release arm is pulled out. You're going to check your platform here. Platform is not cracked, broken, damaged. There's no illegal welds there. You're checking all your mounting bolts. No missing bolts, no loose ones, no rust trails or shiny metal shavings that would indicate a loose one. Um, this is a fixed um, fifth wheel. It's not a sliding fifth wheel. If this was a sliding fifth wheel, you would have to check to make sure that the pin is locked into place, it's not cracked or damaged, and that the air piston that moves the sliding fifth wheel isn't damaged, leaking air, and that the lines running from it are connected in good condition. Um, the remainder of the coupling system, you would check the apron. The apron is what the skid plate 
connects to, rests on. The apron's not cracked, bent, or damaged. There's no waves in it. There's no illegal welds in it. This is your side skirt. You want to make sure that that's not cracked or damaged. There's no intrusions in it. If the tractor was connected to the trailer, you would go underneath the trailer, look up into the skid plate, making sure that the locking jaws would be locked around the kingpin. They're not cracked or damaged. The kingpin itself, you're looking at the kingpin, making sure that the kingpin's not bent, cracked, or damaged in any way. And then the final thing that you would check on the coupling system is when the trailer and tractor are connected properly, there should be no gap, no daylight between the skid plate and the apron. You should not see any daylight when you look in between there. These glad hands, once again, the coupling was hooked up, the glad hands were hooked up. You'd have a good seal here. The rubber grommets are in good shape. You wouldn't hear any air leaks. Your plug would be plugged in with the safety latch down. You also have clearance that you need to check. You need to check the clearance from the trailer when it's coupled to the cab and you want to check the clearance from the landing gear when it's up from the trailer. You need to have adequate clearance there so that you don't have any issues when you're turning. Now we'll go ahead and move to the trailer. Do a general overview of the front of the trailer. The bulkhead, no cracks, damage, no intrusions in the bulkhead anywhere. All the rivets appear to be in place. You got clearance lights on the top of the bulkhead. And on the side here, they're clean, not cracked or damaged, and they're the proper color yellow. You would also look at your reefer unit to make sure that it's secured and not loose, not leaking. As we go down the side of the trailer, you want to check the underneath of the trailer, the frame of the trailer, making sure that all the cross members are there. There's no holes or intrusion in the floor of the trailer, no damage to it. You do the same thing down the side of the trailer. No holes or intrusions anywhere in the trailer. You should have DOT reflectorized tape down the side of the trailer. And you look at all your marker lights and reflectors. Clean, not cracked or damaged. And they're the proper color. Yellow here and the ABS light on the back. We're going to look at our landing gear. You want to make sure that the landing gear cranks and goes up and down. You're going to look at the cross members on the landing gear and the boots or shoes. Nothing's cracked, broken, or damaged. Everything's properly mounted. You got a diesel tank on this one. You'd check it to make sure it's properly mounted, not leaking. Attached at the top and the cap is on and secured. Again, checking the floor of the trailer and the cross members frame, making sure that there's no cracks or damage and there's no intrusions in the bottom of the trailer. We're going to check our airlines here, making sure they're not hanging too low, they're coupled and connected properly, and they're not no bumps, abrasions, they're not cut or they're leaking. If your tractor is equipped with a sliding tandem, you want to check to make sure that the, the handle's not cracked or damaged and that the pins are locked into position so that the, that the wheels are secured. All right, when we get to the back here, you're only going to, for, for purposes of the examination, you're only going to have to check one axle. The, the tester will tell you which axle to check. Also, you're permitted to say, you're permitted to identify the part and say that you're checking it the same way you checked the front one. And as long as you checked the front one properly, you'll get credit for checking the back one as long as the same requirements to be checked are met. So back here, we would check the spring hangers, leaf springs. You got a torsion bar here. It's properly mounted, bolted into place and secure. You got the rest of your suspension parts here, leaf springs, U-bolts, spring hangers. I would check them the same way as up front. I'll check my brake chamber with the clamp, the slack adjuster, the brake hoses, and the brake drums and linings. Same way as I check the ones up front. I'm going to check this tire, tread depth, condition, pressure, the bud spacing, the rims, lug nuts, and the axle seal. This one has an open axle seal, so you would check the fluid in it to make sure it's in a safe range. Valve stem, 
I'm checking all that the same way as I check the front. I'm going to check the splash guard, same way as I check the splash guard up front. You have an ABS light here and a reflector, clean, not cracked or damaged, proper color. I'm going to do general overview of the rear of the trailer. Doesn't appear to be any damage, nothing appears to be cracked or damaged, no intrusions. We're going to look at our lights up top. They're red, proper color, clean, not cracked or damaged. Same thing with your lights down here. You're going to check your door, make sure that your door secures, it opens, goes up, comes back down. No damage to the door. You're going to check your rear bumper, make sure it's properly mounted and secured, not loose or hanging, and it's not damaged. Thanks for watching our outside pre-trip inspection video. Please stay tuned for more videos. Like and subscribe below and comment about anything that you would like to see us make. Uh, obviously, there were some things on this that are different in every state. Know your equipment, know your parts on your equipment uh, so that way you can give a proper pre-trip. Um, thank you for watching and have a great day.